What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and let me tell you my top three things that I just love to see. Number one is seeing my fiance Bailey smile. Number two is seeing my boys succeed in anything that they do. And number three is when the Jacksonville Jaguars win games that they are supposed to win and they go out and dominate the lesser team. And that's what they did against the New York Jets. This was a game I said that the Jaguars are better than the Jets and they should walk away with a W, no questions asked. Things did get a little scary towards the end, but of course Sam Darnold did what Sam Darnold does, and he threw an interception to A.J. Boye, which led to the dagger into the New York Jets. So we are here to recap that game. We're here to give out position grades and players of the week, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus New York Jets. Week number eight, recap, position grades, and players of the week. So let's start things off with talking about what we do to begin every video, and that's always starting with the offense. So we're going to start off with this offensive line. Now, the Jags had a strategy this week to really pass the ball. They passed the ball a lot. Leonard Fournette really had one big run, and then after that, uh, he was a little off and on. I know he had that big 66-yard run, and then he ended the day with only 76 yards, and some of that was due to the negative plays that we had in the red zone, which... The red zone offense is definitely something that the Jaguars as a whole need to focus on. They need to get better at as a whole entire team, and that's no doubt. But this offensive line did its job. Uh, they did give up, I believe, one or two sacks. It was an average day for this offensive line that has struggled, you know, mightily in the past. So, you know, to see Andrew Norwell, Will Richardson, A.J. Cam, Brandon Linder, you know, the tackles, everybody really have a good day against a pretty all right Jets defensive line. Is always good to see to protect Gardner, giving him time. You know, Gardner really kind of eluded a lot of pressure too. So you know, like there were there was pressure like heading towards Minshew, but Minshew made a lot of plays and made sure that he could do things out of the pocket, break the pocket, and make plays. You know, on the run. You know, improvise, which is something that he has done tremendously, tremendously since coming in for the Jaguars. But this offensive line as a whole is going to be getting a B on the day. I think that that's probably the best grade that they have gotten so far this season. Uh, they were a big part on why the Jaguars won this game, so you got to give credit to where credit is due, and that is on the offensive line. So the offensive line going to get a solid B from me. Now let's talk about the running back. Let's talk about Leonard Fournette, Raquel Armstead. Raquel Armstead got nine carries in this game, which I think is probably the most carries he's had like all season long they truly are treating Leonard Fournette as a three down back he is in there almost every single play Raquel did get his opportunity after the big 66 yard run you know he went out to rest but Leonard did have some good runs and uh there were some not so great play calls uh you know, especially that pitch in the goal line, that was one of them that stuck out, you know, for a lot of people. Leonard trying to get his second rushing TD of the season, but he couldn't do that. And, you know, for the most part, it was a passing game for the Jaguars. And, you know, this defense really took care of business, you know, with the turnovers and being able to give the Jaguars short field and make sure that they are in good position to score. And Gardner really got the call. Uh, in this game. So Leonard didn't really get as many touches as he's used to seeing. He still is the AFC leading rusher even after just a 76 yard performance on the ground. Uh, so that big 66 yard performance and then after that he had 10 yards rushing on the ground. So that's not great. But again the Jags were really you know trying to pass the ball heavy and make sure that uh, Gardner got out there. And I think this was kind of like an audition game for Gardner. I mean it might not have been but you know everything's coming down to these next couple of weeks. This Houston game, which is, you know, you'll see tomorrow when I preview the game. We're going to talk about it more. But it is probably the biggest game the Jags have ever had in London so far since they've, you know, signed that contract that they go over to London at least once a year uh, to play a game. And this is definitely the biggest game that the Jags have. And it's a must win for the Jaguars, especially after everybody in the AFC South did their job and got a victory. And that's a big ups to the AFC South as well. You know, the AFC South is the best division in football right now. Who would have saw that coming? Every team in the division currently is 500 or better. The Tennessee Titans, man, even with Ryan Tannehill, they're still going out there getting the job done and making sure they earn their victories. And, you know, Ryan Tannehill didn't even do anything spectacular, and they still managed to go out there and get the dub. So, you know, the game against Houston is going to be really, really big, and you'd like to see Leonard Fournette, you know, kind of get back into that 100-yard game kind of scene. Uh, he did have a good, solid game against... Um, Houston last time, of course, he did have that two-point conversion where he was stopped at the uh, two-yard line. So hopefully 
something tragic like that doesn't happen. But I've seen Leonard have better games this year, and this was probably one of his worst outings thus far this season as far as being a running back goes. But like we talked about earlier, you know, Gardner Minshew's ability to escape the pocket and really make plays outside of the pocket has been tremendous and has been incredible. And most of that comes with Leonard Fournette's passing protection, which is something that he has improved tenfold. And actually, he's actually been really good at that since he's came into the league. So that's not really fair for me to say. I really think Leonard Fournette has always been a really solid, you know, pass blocking running back. And, you know, he did that for Gardner this week, really showing what he has. You know, he has all the tools to be this elite running back. And hopefully, you know, he continues to show that you know, especially once contract time comes, because it looks like this is a guy that could be the face of the franchise and the face of the Jaguars offense. They've run through Leonard Fournette, and like I said, Leonard's had better games. I'm going to give him a B on the day. He did, you know, good. He got 76 yards rushing. He did a couple of things through the air, but not too much. But again, you know, you expect more out of Leonard now that he is, you know, making this turn, making this switch. And one thing that was really impressive, too, that a year ago today, the same week a year ago, Leonard... <coughs> Excuse me. Leonard Fournette was boxing Shaq Lawson at this time, you know, a year ago. And uh, during that game, they pulled the personal foul penalty for whatever reason. But uh, Brian Poole, I believe his name, the defensive back for the Jets, literally just clapped in his face. And Leonard just, you know, took it with a smile. You know, old Leonard Fournette would be pushing and shoving and telling him to get out of his face. You know, that just, again, you know, we talk about it almost every single video now when we recap these games. The growth of Leonard Fournette's character has been incredible. And it's been fun to watch him grow as a person and as a player. So a B for Leonard Fournette. We know he could do better. Hopefully in the London game, he does step up a little bit more. Now let's talk about the wide receivers. And like we say, this wide receiver group is truly, truly emerging as the weeks go on. And I think uh, Gardner Minshew's benefiting from it. You know, these are guys out here that are playing really good football. Like the three guys that we have, the top three guys we have, you know, in Chris Conley, DJ Chark, and D.D. Westbrook, I think that's about as good as you're going to get in the NFL. Like, that's three really solid guys. You got D.J. Chark, who leads the uh, AFC in receiving yards. I believe he has over 650 yards. Uh, I looked at Chris Conley's stats today. He has over 430 yards, and D.D.'s been complimentary into that as well. You know, D.D. was a guy that a lot of us thought coming into this would be the leading receiver for the Jags, but he's been a little quiet, but he's also contributed a lot on special teams as far as punt returns go, and he also laid the hit stick. Uh, on one of the inter on one of the uh, turnovers, one of the fumble turnovers that was had in the Jaguars game, he bam, laid a hit stick. So you know maybe we can play him out at safety or something. But you know as far as those three go, that's about as good as you're going to get in the NFL. You know three young guys that have a ton of talent and a ton to offer. And, you know, you're really, really seeing this window where it's like we have this solid team. Let's put together some wins. Let's build off of this momentum that we clearly, obviously have and make sure we do something with it. And I'd love to see the Jaguars do that. I'd love to see the Jaguars do something with the momentum that they have going forward. And these wide receivers as well hopefully can build off that momentum. DJ Chark had another good game. I believe he had 60, 70 yards. Chris Conley was a stud, obviously, with the 70-yard catch. He's finally coming around. And, you know, he has 400 receiving yards, 430. So, you know, uh, maybe we can have two 1,000-yard two receivers for the Jags this year. Who knows? You know, the last time that that happened was the Allen Bros, obviously, with Allen Hearns and Allen Robinson. Uh, I'd love to see it with Chris Conley and DJ Chark. We'd have to think of a name for those two. But it's obvious, too, that these guys are really good friends off the field. So Chris Conley, you know, I think has a lot to do with how uh, DJ has been improving, and he's, you know, shown that. So the wide receivers as a whole are going to get an A. I think they're really benefiting Gardner Minshew, and they're really – playing top tier football right now you know the only guy that's really been disappointing is the guy that i've said you know was going to come off of his injury strong and really lead the jaguars uh receiver room was uh marquise lee and marquise lee has gotten hurt now in two games i believe and he only has 18 total yards receiving for the jaguars so far this year so that is tragic and you hate to see that and you hate to see him get hurt but this is a guy that jags, jags extended this is a guy that the Jags should trade, you know, get rid of, cut. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Jaguars cut him after, you know, this next year, which is going to be another Dave Caldwell signing like Blake Bortles that the Jaguars end up cutting because he's just, he gets hurt a lot. He ain't contributing really to the team. He ain't contributing to the vision. So unfortunately, Marquise Lee might have to go. You know, you really thought he was going to be bringing in that veteran presence. But, you know, the guy that's really been doing that is Chris Conley. You know, they're both the same age. They're both 27. And uh, Chris Conley's just doing a better job. And he's staying healthy, doing what he needs to do. So Marquise Lee has been really the only guy that I've been thoroughly disappointed with in the wide receiver room. 
But uh, I've been really, really impressed with Chris Conley and what he has to offer. So these wide receivers are going to be getting an A on the day from me. And coming up next, we have Gardner freaking Minshew today. We're rocking the Cougs gear. We got the Rose Bowl sweater. We got a black Cougs hat on. And we are here to represent my boy, your boy, everybody's boy, everybody's boy from this area, everybody's boy from your area. If you live in Florida, we're talking about Gardner freaking Flint Minshew. Holy moly, this was probably his best outing thus far this season. You know, you have a lot of Jaguar fans out there, me included, that said this is really going to be where Minshew really needs to turn it up. If he really wants to stay out there on the field, he's going to have to turn it up and show a new level to his game. He goes over 300 yards, throws three touchdown passes, and has pound for pound probably his best game of his career up until this point. And Gardner's looking like a fucking leader out there on the field. He's looking like a franchise quarterback. And I know I said a lot of mumbo-jumbo about Nick Foles starting last week, but dude, if he could continue this, especially against the Houston game. This Houston game, I think, is the biggest game of Gardner Minshew's career thus far. Um, you know, we'll either bring us, you know, to 5-4, and four, or we're going to go back to below 500. So... And not really I'd have a crack at the playoffs, you would imagine. So we really, really need to do something with this and get things going, get things fired up, and make sure that Gardner comes out with a victory. His first time playing in London, hopefully that doesn't change him too bad. So we're going to be rolling with Gardner Minshew with an A-plus on the day. A Pepsi Rookie of the Week award should be in his future yet again. Should win his 6th out of 8 awards, uh, Rookie of the Week award so far this season. And, yeah, it's, just, it's been impressive. You know, Gardner Minshew is doing his thing, completes a lot of passes, makes a lot of smart reads, doesn't throw a lot of picks. You know, the big thing is his fumbling problem, and he needs to cut that out because I didn't realize he fumbled the ball like nine times now. You know, like total, I think it's like nine, ten times he's fumbled. We need to, you know, cut that shit out because, you know, we're not going to recover every single fumble. And if that happens during crunch time, then that is just going to be tragic. We're going to give Gardner Minshew an A-plus on the day, though. Now, this whole overall offensive grade, we're going to be giving this offense an A on the day, mostly due to the wide receivers and Gardner Minshew's play, and then the big run by Leonard Fournette to kick things off for the offense. So this, this was one of the best uh, offensive games for the Jaguars thus far this season, and you love, love to see that. Now let us break down the defensive side of the ball. Right, so we talked about how this was probably the offensive's, the offense's best game thus far this season. This also might have been the defense's best game this season. The defensive line came in with eight sacks. Austin Calitro, I believe Austin's his first name, came in at linebacker. He put the pressure on the quarterback. He did a solid job. Miles Jack did well as well. The secondary held things down. And there is like no complaints that I have about this defensive side of the ball. But we're going to kick things off with the defensive line. And boy, oh boy, this is the best game this defensive line's had all season. I said it in my last video. I truly believe and I truly think that the Jaguars have the best defensive line in football, bar none. You got like Josh Allen who had two sacks, and he currently leads the Jaguars in sacks. He has seven. He's three away from double-digit sacks. you got to imagine he's going to get there. So the fact that he can have, you know, ten sacks this season, double-digit sacks, that's production. You know, and it's a guy that's not even necessarily, like, a starter. He sees a lot of field time. Like, don't get me wrong, but he's not necessarily, like, a starter. You know, him and Calais, Calais and Yan are really those guys. But, you know, see, seeing him do well is awesome. He also had a forced fumble, and you obviously can tell him and Yannick and Gawkway are really good friends because they both performed to the highest level. Yan got a sack. Dewan Smoot got a sack. Dewan Smoot got his fifth sack of the season. Like, Dewan Smoot's a guy that, you know, I kind of thought during the offseason, I was like, you know, Smoot's on the roster. Probably won't get that much playing time, but he's there, you know, you know, doing his thing. Maybe he'll get a sack or two, but he's definitely exceeded expectations. Same thing with Taven Bryan. You know, a lot of people really wanted the Jags to trade for Leonard Williams, but I think one thing that we really need to do is kind of try and develop Taven Bryan because in year two, he's already doing bounds better than he did in year one and hopefully he can continue that progression because he's d he's doing well in the run game and he's plugging up holes real good and he's you know putting pressure on quarterbacks you know a defensive tackle isn't necessarily supposed to rack up all these sacks you know what I mean he's his job is to plug up the holes for, to, for the running lanes make sure that there's no running lanes available and to really put you know pressure on the quarterback you know br push the guy back make sure that he's sitting in the quarterback's lap and I think Taven Bryan has done that thus far this season and of course you know the three-headed monster of Yannick Ngakwe Josh Allen and Calais Campbell have just been spectacular it's been awesome to watch and you know Josh Allen can't learn from two better people uh at the defensive end position so this defensive line is going to be getting an A plus from me I thought they played really well you know the best group in the league in my opinion definitely had probably its best outing thus far this season 
uh, had the most sacks that they've had in a se- in a game this season so far. So he loved to see that, and you got to imagine Sam Darnold was seeing ghosts yet again. Now we're going to be talking about the linebackers. You know, it was kind of it was kind of weird. You know, I didn't know who exactly was going to be playing that weak side linebacker spot, but it ended up being Austin Calitro. And Austin Calitro got his. You know, he went out there. He had a, you know, a missed sack, but uh, this, that turned into a turnover. And, you know, he was kind of, uh, he wasn't great in pass coverage. You know, that's that's where he struggled. He was not great in pass coverage. You know, he allowed that two-point conversion play to happen. And, you know, Sam Darnold, if he did complete a pass, it was mostly on Calitro. But this is a guy that doesn't have <clears throat> a ton of NFL experience, if any, so... You know, that's to be expected. But I thought he did a decent job, you know, stepping in, you know, playing a role that he didn't expect to play in. Sometimes you always got to take a drink, relax, and gather your thoughts. Miles Jack also had a good game, too, in the middle. Uh, He's had one of his better seasons thus far this year, you know, really taking ownership of the defense and, you know, leading those guys. So the linebackers are going to be getting a B from me. Like I said, Calitro did struggle, but, you know, it, it's to be expected, you know. He's not a great player by any means. Next up, we're talking about the secondary in the secondary play. Lights out. Three turnovers by the secondary. Two of them from Trey Herndon. And I'm going to add Trey Herndon in the fourth slot in things you love to see. And that's Trey Herndon's progression. Because I really like this kid. I really do. But I've been hard on him. You know, I've like, dude, we're going to have to replace him. You know, like... We have to fix that problem, but he went out there and got two interceptions. It's like, you know, he hears us, he knows, like, he's replacing Jalen Ramsey. Those are big shoes to fill. He goes out there, gets two picks, and that's two more picks than Jalen Ramsey has all season long. So, Trey Herndon did his job out there. He balled out. He did well. He did fantastic. Jared Wilson, Ronnie Harrison held things down in the back end. A.J. Boye also got an interception that was probably Sam Darnold's best throw of the game. Like, but, like, the best throw to, like, AJ. You know, like, if that pass was to AJ Boye, like, actually was his target, that would have been a dot. Like, when he threw it, it was, like, perfectly placed. Like, back shoulder right into AJ's hands. It was awesome to see. This is probably the the best game the secondaries played. And, honestly, probably the best overall game that the Jacksonville Jaguars have played. We're going to be giving this secondary an A on the day. And we're going to be giving this defense an A on the day as well. I can't tell you how happy I am how well this defense played. I can't tell you how happy I am how well this offense played. Now let's dive into my favorite time of the week, your favorite time of the week, and your mom's favorite time of the week. Players of the week. And on the offensive side of the ball, we're going to be giving it to Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew balled out, probably had his best game of the season, and dominated, and is really making the case for why he should be the starting quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars for the rest of the season. He's making a case. He's making it hard for the guys up front uh, to make that decision. I think from what it looks like, it looks like it's Nick Foles or nothing at this point, but you know, with a guy making plays like that, you definitely have to consider playing Gardner Minshew. So Gardner Minshew is going to be winning the Offensive Player of the Week. The Defensive Player of the Week is going to be another rookie, another young man by the name of Josh Allen. Josh Allen with the forced fumble and the two sacks. I was going to give it to Trey Herndon, uh, but, you know, it was close. I really wanted to give it to Herndon, but I think Josh Allen deserves it. And, you know, if you play Minshew for a full season and Josh Allen continues the ball, the Jags might have the Offensive Player of the Year, I mean the uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year and the Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, you know, on the same team, and that'd be insane because these guys are playing lights out, and they win the defensive player of the week and the, 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 the and the offensive player of the week for the Jacksonville Jaguars this week against the New York Jets. We're four and four, third in the AFC South. We got a big matchup against the Houston Texans that really, really can determine our playoff spot. And if you want to hear about what I think about that Texans game coming up, you got to stay tuned till tomorrow when we drop when we drop our Jaguars versus Texans preview. And that was my Jaguars versus Jets recap. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Dream Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Dream Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel four days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them is just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.